Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd from Bish's RV and welcome to Alliance today. I actually uh, came down here because I heard they had a new floor plan in their uh, Smaller Avenue All Access series. This is the new 24RK. And there's bits and pieces of it that remind me of a few other RVs I've seen, but I've never seen one quite like this. And the more that I see of these, the more that I am liking on their, uh, not just their Avenue series, but the smaller series as well. So first of all, this thing uh, comes in just under 30 feet and about 8,000 pounds, give or take. And uh, that right there is a very towable, travel-friendly kind of size. Going along with that, you've got the Goodyear tires, like all the same suspension kind of stuff they do on their big paradigms, they're still doing here. All they do is just squish it down and condense it down versus their bigger models. That's one of the things I like about these. You're not really making sacrifices. You're just condensing your total size of your uh, Alliance RV. We're looking at one today. Uh, when I first put my videos out on this uh, Alliance Avenue All Access series, they were Aren't sure about solar well you can see here that they are obviously listening to your folks and your opinion and we're going to see a, a very healthy sized solar panel on this sucker we've got 12 volt fridge we've got countertop for days in this carpetless ventless flooring carpetless floor flush slide easy cleaning kind of stuff true queen bed fantastic storage and it's just a little bit of an atypical layout rockwood does a, a living room and kitchen kind of similar to this but um they don't do it with uh the uh the the north south like cpap friendly kind of queen walk around bedroom that you see here they do it a little different way and that's why i like having access to so many different rvs you could say i like to have all access to all kinds of different rvs <laughs> anyway um if that's a indication how today's gonna go buckle up with the grown train folks auto leveling hot cold camp rated uh 3 pound towing hitch and a partridge in a pear tree this is cool i like it it's not perfect it's not flawless it's got some hiccups that may be major points of concern for you i'm going to give you the good with the bad and let you decide what works best for you and if you appreciate that if you're new with us hit the subscribe button like our video if you're a returning member of the rv nerd herd and let me know where you think they nailed it and you think they failed it now, diehard RV industry fans and enthusiasts are going to look at this layout and go, oh, so they're, uh, they're just doing a little bit of RV R&D on the Rockwood 2442 BS. And <laughs> no BS, without question, yeah, it's, it's definitely very inspired by that Rockwood model. This does not have a bed slide, so it's going to be a chunk lighter and less money, which are some, I think, very significant factors for consideration. Um, there's going to be a lot of people who want something smaller like this that need a lighter hitch weight as well, and that's where this one could kind of come into play. Now, a uh, quick note on the air conditioning systems here. Usually you don't see a centralized air conditioner in an Alliance, but since this is one air standard and it is physically a smaller RV, they do have a 15,000 BTU air conditioner standard in the living room, and you can option the second air up here in the bedroom. They are all 50 amp. Normally, it would be flip-flop backwards for that, but they don't standardize those. So that kind of makes me ask the question, should they standardize dual air conditioners on these? That would give you a centralized air conditioner for the bedroom and bathroom, and then a standalone exclusive, uh, you know, dumping cold air into the living room over here. I'm kind of curious, which one do you think would uh, you'd prefer? Now, dual air standard naturally is going to add more money standard, but if you're going to add a second air anyway, I think it might actually work a little bit better. Now, this layout is a little bit different from the average bear, and you kind of got to look at it through our floor plan in a flash. And I got to tell you, I like this light decor. Um, notice, too, I'm going to give you a look here, then I'm going to get you right up close to the cabinets. One of the things that they don't do on this, oh, I love that rear kitchen window. I, I really like that for some reason. I think it kind of takes me back to my childhood. Sorry, I squirrel. Anyway, what I was getting at is they go light and bright on the cabinets, but if you notice, they don't do any sort of distress accent kind of antiquing sort of things. It just looks fresh and clean and new. Um, I don't know, personally, I really, uh, I really like it. Now, I, one of the things I like to do, I like to sit in what I call the driver's seat, and I like to show you the RV from the perspective of like the theater seat where you might be sitting. And if you sit down right here, one of the things you see in that car moving out there gives us just a perfect uh, visual effect. Even though you don't see giant campsite window coverage, your, your viewing from your seating is actually not too awful bad. The TV is definitely mounted a little high. And when I see a TV up high like this, I start to wonder, especially with the fact that below this you have those uh, dining bar stools, 
is that person going to be in the way of the TV? So kind of planting the camera here a little bit and using my chubby butt as a reference point, I was actually very happily, pleasantly surprised to find that the TV is out of the way. Like if you sit, even a big person sitting at those stools, even the one closest to the, the theater seat, they're really not in the way. Um, I'm also going to give Alliance some credit here. I've seen a lot of manufacturers do a layout like this, but they put this like six inch deep shadow box around the TV that jabs the person uh, who's sitting uh, nearest the wall in the shoulder. You don't have that problem here. They made this uh, breakfast bar countertop peninsula thing deeper and longer than most brands do. And what that creates is plenty of space, basically. I, I, I think they did a really, really good job there. And like I said, I bought an acre of countertop space through this. Just huge amounts of counter area all the way through. On the back wall here, we've got ourselves that gas... Uh, nope, nope, nope. Sorry, not gas electric. That is a 12-volt DC compressor fridge. Um, I also really like, if you look up top here, you see that big XL Max Air vent fan really keeping the airflow moving. We also apparently have some sort of uh, guest today. Uh, any any bug specialist, can you tell me, what is, what is that? What is that thing? Anyway, before I go creeping people out, let me, um, let me actually back up here. One of the things I've noticed, I'm looking for kitchen outlets right now, and you don't tend to see a lot of them down at the countertop level. Uh, yep, as I kind of suspected, we've got outlets under the overhead cabinets, which is not my favorite position for them, but at least they didn't forget to put outlets. And the thing, as dumb as that sounds, I, uh, I have seen that happen before. And if you are kind of cooking up a storm and no one's sitting at the theater seat, one of the nice things is that TV can pivot around like you see right about now. Um, also, they just maximized. They nailed all the storage under the countertop level of this. Um, what's also really cool, it's all plywood drawers. They're all reinforced on the bottom to be able to carry more weight, which is really cool. That's actually something the Alliance factory team uh, came up with originally, which I think is really cool how the team that works on these takes that level of pride that they want to improve their product. And Alliance's uh, labor retention is about the best in the RV industry right now. They have done a fantastic job of making this a place that people want to work. And I think that by making it a place that people want to work, the people that work here make an RV that they can be proud of. And I think that you can be proud of enjoying. Anyway, sorry, I'm kind of getting on my soapbox here. Um, floor flush carpetless slide out over here is really nice. You can get right up to that pantry. Um, you have your choice between a theater seat or a hide bed. I'd be kind of curious to know which one you'd go with. I would prefer theater seat, but if I was looking at this, I would look at it as an exclusive couples kind of use camper right here. I would not look at this as any sort of like, uh, gonna have a lot of family and guests over kind of thing, but nothing says you couldn't go with a hide bed and kind of make that function happen. You may have noticed the, uh, the blackout roller shades, although I, maybe I should say gray out roller shades. I, I like how they didn't go too aggressive there. Um, this RV doesn't have any sort of, uh, electric space heat and fireplace. I've always kind of wondered if a manufacturer could maybe put one against that cabinet over there, like sacrifice a little bit of that storage. I never like giving up storage, but I don't know that it's, uh, it would be a terrible thing. Another thing that's kind of handy here, this little sticker is keying us off into it. Um, they have a color coded wiring system on these, which is, uh, something Keystone first, uh, debuted in the towable RV industry. And it's always been my experience that brands who do that, who give us, uh, you know, uh, greater attention to detail on that tend to have fewer electrical problems just because I think even the people putting them together have, have a better, you know, time of it, basically. Sliding our way upstairs, we got the little clutter cutter shoe garage right by the door, which is just mm, chef's kiss. Perfect location for that. I really like how everything is very, if I'm going to, I mean... I like this RV, so there's not a lot that I have to nitpick on it. There is a hiccup on road mode that I think might irk some people. I'm not a fan. Like, they did kind of quick stain this, but I don't know that I like looking down the edge of the wood like that. But, I mean, that's the kind of level of stupid and picky I've had to go on here. One of the other things I want to showcase for you is um, whether it's the lights above the dining, the lights in the bedroom, or the lights here in the living room, they're all on a dimmer switch. If you hold and press the light right there, 
you see how it kind of swells down and up, which I think is sort of cool. I'm gonna run it through another cycle here just so that you get to see it. And it has positional memory as well. So it'll know where you left that off and then it'll know where to flick back on uh, effectively. By the way, all of our cabinetry is all pocket screwed lumber core. So that's a nice little thing on these. Uh, so it's not like stapled fasteners basically. Sliding true pocket door built right into the wall here into the bathroom. They like to use these um, epoxy poured countertops. Um, Anybody who's like uh, a countertop expert or something, can you give me an idea? Like, it, it, like they look shiny, they look cool. I'm not really familiar with like the long-term hold up and upkeep of those though. So if you have some insights, please feel free to share. This is a Max Air fan. It's a little bit different kind of Max Air fan. It's not the traditional four inch fart fan. It's about a six inch fart fan basically. So it's not the world's biggest, but it's also not the world's smallest. Um, headroom, they did a great job. It, there's well i'm a little bit over six foot and you see how i could easily stand in that shower and that does look to be one of those 30 by 36 rectangular showers which i think uh, a lot of folks are going to be happy to see porcelain foot flush toilet over here and they angled it just enough i had plenty of right hand elbow room i had plenty of left hand elbow room i think that does qualify as fairly fluffy friendly and you see how there's no floor vents here to catch any sort of uh, sprinklage, uh, <laughs> Peter Sprinklage. <laughs> oh, that's uh, that is uh, that that was a reference, by the way, in case you didn't get the joke, to Peter Dinklage, who is just an absolutely hilarious, fantastic actor. But the way that phrase comes out, it definitely has a little bit of a double entendre. Absolutely, it wasn't my intention, but as soon as it came out, I was like, "Uh oh, getting fired today." <laughs> Now, notice you don't see a step up around the bed. They use what's called a rhino box frame, where it doesn't require an extra cross beam mounted four foot back from the nose of the trailer, which means you can just walk right up into this thing. The roof line does taper down, but by the time it tapers down, you're probably ducking to get into bed anyway. We've already sort of seen, and I've already spoiled the fact that you can get this with an optional second air conditioner. And I'd be kind of curious, would you, again, uh, you know, standard second air or optional second air, which would be your preference? And I'm kind of almost starting to become in the, uh, in the camp of standard second airs on things. Like, it just, it doesn't seem like you're ever going to regret having it, you know? Good. Uh, this is something they've updated since the last uh, avenues that I've recorded. Household and USB outlets very obviously on both sides of the bed. And that is a 60 by 80 true queen bed. You don't have the shorty McShort pants bed here where the bed goblins can pop out from under it and rip your toes off with plenty of room to walk around. Once again, over here, we do have the uh, dimmer switch lighting. And just like we've done in the rest of the RV, let's give you a look at all the different storage areas. Let's actually start right down here. Uh, they are practicing one of my favorite things that I like to call not an ounce of space gone to waste, which I, I, I think is just always a really good policy for manufacturers. And with no step up under the bed, it means the entire underbed storage space is just wide open and easily accessible here. Now, laying down on the bed and flipping around the other direction, you see where there would be some TV, uh, well, there are, not would be, but are TV hookups uh, up there under the optional second air conditioner. And then we come over here to door number one and door number two. Which, to the surprise of no one, turns out to be a big extra closet space here. Now, I was a little bit curious and I peeked in here and I don't see any sort of like washer dryer hookups. Sometimes when you see these corner closets, they do that. This one apparently not quite large enough to make that happen. Although, if you notice, man, they got triple dresser plywood drawers all the way down to the floor here. I've also closed the slide out for road mode. So by virtue of the fact that I'm standing in the bedroom uh, and the bathroom is off the hallway next to the door, I think you can quickly discern that this is uh, fantastic if you wanna take a nap or take a crap, but that is totally up to you. The question becomes, what if you want to you know, have a snack? And that's where this one has one major roadblock. Now, if you're careful, you actually can kind of tiptoe slip slide between here and that does mean that we can get back to the kitchen. We could get back to the stove and the sink and, the, and all kinds of cabinet space. Getting to the refrigerator is a little more tricky. You can technically reach back here. You can technically reach into it. So I guess I my question for you, do you consider this fully travel functional 
Um, or is the, is the squeeze between the, the countertop and getting into the refrigerator just a little bit too tight for you? And maybe the answer might depend on your stature a little bit. I don't know. And in case you hear a little bit of background noise, uh, I am at their facility. Oh, this is awesome. You see how it's like leaving a trail of water. I forgot to mention this, uh, or I, I, I forgot to talk about it previously. Every single Alliance RV, when it is built, when it's rolling down the production line, they actually give it full holding tanks and it stays full all the way down the production line. And then they basically do a little test tow uh, around their facility with full holding tanks. Um, and they're one of the only manufacturers I've ever seen take the time and effort to do something like that. So obviously that one was going to get parked and it was getting drained out after its little test right there. But uh, the fact that they do little stuff like that, I, I think is very cool. Now we are a 101 inch wide body, which is one of the reasons this is one of the biggest little fifth wheels you're ever gonna run into. They are using Asdell on the inside and outside layers of their sidewalls. If you're not familiar with Asdell, it's composite uh, material, it's a wood substitute. Um, and both the walls and the floor actually are all uh, composite. They're block foam, aluminum, and Asdell. So it's kind of what I call good bones camping, gives you a lot more peace of mind. Not only do you have an easy access docking center right here, but you also, just like the big paradigms, have easy access to things like your water pump for winterizations and all kinds of stuff. Um, similarly, the furnace is mounted on the outside wall of the RV, so if it does need service, it slides right out and it's easy to get to. You don't got to tear apart your stairs. Now, I like to show you the good with the bad, and again, if you appreciate stuff like that, hit that subscribe button. If you look, this is what I'm going to call a two-headed sewer monster. Up front here for the bathroom, we have a black and gray exhaust. And when we get to the, the back side of the RV, you'll see the, uh, the, the gray tank for the kitchen empties out there. That's part of the reason why, if you look at the holding tank capacities on this, it's like 90 gallons gray. And you're like, dude, whoa, that's like so much bigger than everything else. It's a pair of 45 gallon tanks. Now they don't cross plumb together. So it's two separate 40 pound, uh, 45 gallon rather, I'm sorry, 45 gallon uh, gray water holding tanks. I'm right here on the main thoroughfare. I'm hoping not to get run over. Um, if uh, this footage makes it uh, to the light of day, you know that either they found my camera or I made it out alive, one of the two. Uh, again, for towing factors, 30 foot, uh, especially when you consider you've got those nice Goodyear Endurance radials and the uh, Moride shock dampening suspension package and the Kurt Rotoflex pin box. This is going to ride and handle very, very nicely. I think this makes a really good pairing for like a gas three quarter ton. I don't know that you got to go heavy duty diesel or one ton or anything like that. If you're going to do some serious towing though, I still don't feel good about putting even a small fifth wheel paired up with a half ton pickup. If you're only towing very, very locally and you've got a very capable half ton, well, perhaps, but even then, if you were only towing very, very locally, I don't know if a fifth wheel is necessarily the right decision for you anyway, because they cost more, because there's more construction to them, but there's no question. They do ride and handle better. It's just hands down. Uh, the awning space is pretty good. It almost looks like they could have put a bigger awning on it, but um, I, I know how awning suppliers work and they come in certain sizes. If they tried to go any longer, it would start running into the taper of the roof line in the back and it just kind of wouldn't fit. And by the way, the stable steps are literally what makes this floor plan kind of possible because without them, uh, the, the RV wouldn't be able to be nose to tail load balanced properly. Now this is a four point electric auto leveling system. Some folks have, uh, like I, I get the, the, the idea that yes, six points, you know, can provide better stability, but they literally don't fit on a smaller coach like this. So kind of keep that in mind. We don't have an outside kitchen, but we do have a propane cooker hooker, brother. Uh, underbelly's forced air heated, enclosed radiant barrier and holding tank heaters. You see a belly mounted spare and the sewer hose caddy tube to keep the stinky slinky under control and to avoid giving yourself pink eye. <laughs> nobody, nobody wants to come home from a trip with pink eye. Anyway, which is why, you know, uh, sewer hose Sally and, and uh, you know, picnic table Pete slapping their, their sewer hoses across the public picnic tables. That's gross. Knock it off. Uh, looking at the ladder up there and then giving you a little peek uh, up at the roof line, you'll get to see, based on your input, they said, okay, you want a, uh, a decent solar package on a smaller RV? We're going to make that happen. And you see here how they are starting to offer 
their bigger solar panels uh, as an option available on these like you'd find on the bigger paradigms uh, and stuff like that. So I think it is very cool how they continue to listen to your feedback and, and truly being a customer driven kind of uh, product and brand right here. Now on the back, we have ourselves a 3,000 pound uh, towing hitch system, complete with safety chain hooks and four-way wiring harness, and of course, their own little sticker propaganda. I can't blame them. I would do the same thing. I, I really love their logo, by the way. Um, it's kind of interesting because when you see that triangle behind Alliance, you sort of always thought it was representing the A in Alliance, but it actually represents, uh, it, it's the symbol for Delta, for change which was originally going to be the name of the very first Alliance RV. It later became Paradigm, but now Delta is their new travel trailer series. But Delta has always actually been part of Alliance, which I think is very cool. And like I said, it is a two-headed sewer monster. I don't want to end the, the video on a sour note, but I like to be real. And I know that that's a point of concern for some folks. And uh, again, I like to shoot you straight and just giving you the information that you've been asking me for all these years. So that's my... Uh, well, I would say two cents, but with inflation, I, I don't know. <laughs> two cents ain't worth as much anymore. It's my look at it anyway, through my nerdy lens. But I'm just one dude. I'll never claim to be authority. It's not my way or the highway. You tell me. What do you think about it? I will leave you a link uh, to check pricing and availability in the video description. But keep in mind, at the time this video is coming out, brand new floor plan, it probably hasn't even made landfall yet. I don't have pricing data available to me myself. I'm not actually in sales. It seems to some people get thrown off by that. But if you contact any of our Alliance stores, of which I think we have over a dozen, we can definitely get you some figures on this one right here. At least some ballpark kind of stuff. Whether you're curious or whether you're serious, give us a call. We'll figure it all out. We don't do hidden fees. We do everything else. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Bye.